Prime Minister of Australia, I wish him well now in the high office of Prime Minister of this country. Therese and I wish he, Margie, and their family well in coping with the stresses and strains of high office that lie ahead. We know a little bit of what that is like. And Therese and I look forward to greeting them at the Lodge early next week in the same gracious manner with which Mr and Mrs Howard welcomed us six years ago. I also wish his government well for the great and difficult challenges that now lie ahead for Australia. While there were scenes of jubilation and celebration here at the Coalition Party headquarters, things were very different in the Rudd camp. Earlier this evening, I spoke to my colleague, Phil Mercer, who was with the Labor Party as supporters in Brisbane. Well, the party is well and truly over for the Labor government here at uh, party headquarters in Brisbane. Uh, there is almost no one here, just me and a few balloons. Earlier this evening, Kevin Rudd took to the stage. He was in a remarkably buoyant mood for a man who just led his party to an electoral defeat. And perhaps that uh, electoral carnage that uh, the party was fearing in the key battleground in Western Sydney hadn't eventuated. So it could have been far worse. So perhaps Mr. Rudd, the former Prime Minister, reflecting on uh, a campaign that was uh, fairly disastrous in its outcome, but could have been far, far worse. And uh, it is clear that the Labour Party has been punished by voters for that infighting. Kevin Rudd won the election in 2007. He was ousted by his deputy, Julia Gillard, in 2010. Three years later, Mr Rudd returned the favour. So I think that voters grew sick and tired of the Labour soap opera, the, the, the internal divisions, and also uh, the carbon tax that was brought in, the extremely unpopular in quarters of Australian society. The big question now is uh, how and when will Labour be reborn and recover and rebuild? And uh, another big question, of course, how will Tony Abbott manage the transition from being an extremely aggressive and successful opposition leader to becoming a statesman, to becoming a prime minister? All of these questions will be answered in good time. Uh, 14.7 million Australians had their say, and their say has been uh, pretty decisive. Uh, we wave goodbye to the former Labour government, and Australia once again ushers in a new era of conservatism. Big night for Australian politics, and tomorrow the country will wake up with a new leader and a new government. Back to you in London. Yeah, Alda, thanks very much. Daniela, uh, seeing how all the numbers stack up for us, it's not just about the Prime Minister, it's about the Senate as well. That in itself is a monumental job, not least for the voters. They had that huge ballot paper to get through. Well, Peter, my state of South Australia is one of the smaller states, and this was the Senate ballot paper. It had 72 candidates in it. 73, I'm sorry. It took me a good 10 minutes to fill out when I went and voted the other day at the Australian High Commission. That's one of the smaller ones. In states of New South Wales, it was even larger. So now this idea of having to work out how the numbers fall in the Senate, which is vital in Australia, that's the second House of Parliament. Legislation needs to go through there if uh, Tony Abbott is going to get any of his uh, ambitious agenda through. Now, it looks like the balance of power isn't going to be with the Coalition or Labor or the Greens, but a, a rag bag of independents who uh, will be a bit like herding cats to get them all on side of each piece of legislation bit by bit. So it doesn't look like Tony Abbott got all of his own way today. But at least for the voters now, Mr Abbott has managed to triangulate so many disparate groups, you know, with so many important, seriously important issues. However... The country's had, what, three prime ministers in 71, 72 days. At, at least now the electorate can go, whew, at least we've got some sort of settlement, some sort of calm, and maybe, just maybe, we can work with this guy. That's exactly right. That statistic of three prime ministers in 70 or so days is an extraordinary one when you think about it. Australians want stability, they want calm. They've had three years of minority government, a little bit like with the UK. Most voters aren't used to that, having coalitions and deals in the lower house. So now Australians have got a very clear, solid majority in government in the coalition. 
It's suspected that Tony Abbott might take his sweet time in forming a cabinet even. He's going to uh, do this very methodically, step by step, just take the pitch down because Australian politics for the last three or four years has been uh, played at fever pitch and I think everyone just wants to take it all down a level. So Tony Abbott might take his time even, uh, he'll be sworn in in the next week and then by the time he gets around to uh, swearing in a cabinet, uh, it could be another week or so before Australians know the makeup of their government. Overall, Daniela, What's your sense? I mean, we've, we've had a few hours to digest the arithmetic and the mathematics of this now. Was this a complete rejection of Mr Rudd? Was it a ringing endorsement of Mr Abbott? Or was it someplace in between? It is somewhere in the middle. Um, essentially, uh, Labour lost this election more than the uh, coalition won it. That's not to take anything away from it. But uh, people wanted to give this government a kicking, and they have, in not the numbers that were being predicted up to uh, a couple of days or so ago, Labor's out. It's been a very decisive uh, defeat, but uh, essentially the infighting of the last few years has cost this government dearly, and uh, it's all over in uh, six years. The uh, euphoria of Kevin 07 from uh, six years ago, this uh, generation of Labor leaders has now gone. Daniela, thanks very much. Daniela Retorto, of course, more on the events in Australia on our website. That's always there for you whenever you want it, bbc.com forward slash news. You can also keep right up to date across our Twitter and Facebook feeds as well. Uh, moving on to some other top stories this hour. Thousands